Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about The 100 by Cass Morgan. Now, um, I don't necessarily uh, get the... I mean, I understand making uh, movies based on books, because you have, like, a ready-made script right, right there, and all you need to do is really, like, tweak it a little bit to, you know, take it from the the book to movie, you know, as, as always when it comes to stuff that's changed in mediums. But I don't necessarily quite get um, t making TV shows based on books, because, I, I mean, with longer, long-running series like Game of Thrones, okay, I get it. But then you have um, books, I mean, TV shows that are based on only, like, one book. You know, like, uh, there's, um, Logan's Run, uh, Starship Troopers, and, um, that, uh, new show, Under, Under the Dome. You know, like, obviously you're gonna have to take on so many, uh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> you know, liberties that it'll, you'll be lucky if it's even kind of recognizable, just barely. But, um, you know, let's move on from that and get on with this. <clears throat> Ever since a devastating nuclear war, humanity has lived on spaceships far above Earth's radioactive surface. That's actually just, well, three spaceships, you know, the Arcadia, Phoenix, and Walden. Now, 100 juvenile delinquents are being sent on a dangerous mission to, on a dangerous mission, to recolonize the planet. It could be their second chance at life, or it could be a suicide mission. Clark was arrested for treason, well, actually for something else, but that's a twist that I won't spoil today. Though she's haunted by the memory of what she really did, like I said, Wells came to Earth for the girl he loves. Spoilers, it's Clark. <clears throat> um... But will she ever forgive him? Spoiler, she does. Bellamy fought his way onto the transport pod to protect his sister, and Glass managed to escape, only to find that life on the ship is just as dangerous as she feared it would be on Earth. I think she would already know that, but okay. In a savage land, the, in a savage land, the hundred must fight to survive. They were never meant to be heroes, but they may be mankind's last hope. I mean, so the story from this, as well as uh, looking at a few other bits, is basically like a combination of like Fallout, Earth 2, and uh, a little bit of the Hunger Games in mixed in, you know? And um, I should be working worth mentioning that there is a sequel to this called Day 21 where they finally make contact with the or they find where they find that there are people still living on the planet already and it wasn't necessarily ever, you know, I mean lifeless or whatever. There there are still people and they encounter them and but that doesn't come out until like fall 2014, so or, at least according to this, it's fall 2014. But whenever I'll read it, I think I'll check it out. End up, but anyway, um, the um, like I said, um, there's some things that I kind of understand, but don't necessarily get like um, like different stuff, like uh, like uh, well, uh, this is kind of the thing that I kind of feel would be. Once again, like, sort of helped by, like, a map or a diagram of, like, the ships that they all live on. Because, um, you know, there's all this thing, like, talking about the sky bridges and the solar fields and, I'm like, huh? But, anyway, uh, back to the book, um, uh, or back to the story. You know, it basically switches back and forth between, you know, the the hundred people, tr hundred young people trying to survive on um, Earth, and um, and then the was it a glass, you know, surviving on her on the space station. I mean, spaceships, 
and um, <clears throat> you know it's just uh, well that's pretty much it. There's like some stuff about like a uh, how like Bellamy doesn't necessarily want the everyone else to join her by um, and so forth, and um, uh, yeah, you know just different characters surviving and that's it. And um, there's some stuff that I kind of get and some stuff I don't. Like I said earlier with the whole uh, needing a diagram or map or whatever of the space station to know like what's going on or to like, because I think it would be better showing of like how people lived on the station. And, um, and you know, there's like, um, with like, I was wondering like, why exactly did they send like juvenile delinquents and they probably could have you know um, I don't know maybe like framed like some perfectly good adults that kinda know a little bit more about what they're doing although I guess that could be answered by the fact that they want to keep all the people that know what they're doing on the station I mean on the ships and you know they can risk sacrificing like a hundred or so random people who are criminals, and a lot of them really are, you know, and, um, there's, um, <clears throat> um, you know, it's like, oh, right, and then there's, like, um, uh, the whole thing with the whole, uh, everyone living on, uh, the, on the spaceships, and, they talk about how, like, they need to, like, keep everything, like, recycled so they don't run out of, there's always, resources are always scarce, scarce, but then again, you know, there's, like, times where they run into, like, rooms that have, like, garbage strewn about, and then there's, like, whenever they kill someone, they just float them out into an airlock, out into space, which you think would be, um... Which I don't really get. Like, you think if, like, this society would be somewhere more similar to that of, like, the Fremen from Arrakis, where, like, when somebody dies, they, like, everything is reused from, like, the clothes on their backs to the water in their bodies. But, um, you know, what it is, it's got plenty of good story elements and plenty of interesting characters and in little plot twists and whatnot. And, of course, there's the uh, TV show that this was based on, which is the reason, the entire reason why I even know about this book. Because, you know, when I saw, like, the, looked it up, saw the trailer, looked it up online, did more info, I thought the whole premise was interesting, you know. Like I said, you know, Fallout, but in with space stations instead of vaults, it's kind of, it seems like a little bit of Earth 2. And, um, yeah. And, um, then we get to the TV show, and, um, you know, I thought that was good, too. Kind of, once again, with the whole, uh, everyone always, like, a lot of people, like, writing it off, and like, oh, just a bunch of good-looking teenagers being put on a planet Earth and being all good-looking and sexy or whatever, and dumb, and, you know, kind of dissonant, cause, uh, cause, but, you know what? They're still good. Um, I find their characters kind of inconsistent, and uh, some of the problems are even, or kind of feel like way more, uh, you know, think about it way more in your face. Like, um, in the book, like, or, like it adds some, like, plot things that I don't get, and, at, you know, increases more. Like, one is, like, uh, in the book, they gave them, you know, some food, water, and supplies so they can, like, survive for a little bit. But in the show, they don't really uh, give them anything. They just sort of expect it to, you know, uh, you know, live or die without anything, without any sort of supplies or anything, which I guess makes sense, you know, which, now that I think about it, it makes actually more sense on the, um, for the, for the, um, TV show because, you know, like I said, you know, low on supplies, they don't want to waste resources on a bunch of criminals. And then there's another thing that's, um, that I don't get is like, is like they're, well, they want to keep in contact with them, but, and like, they're, apparently they had enough supplies to put like little transmitter things on their wrists. 
but that, you know, broadcast their vitals onto the ship, onto the station, which in this case is a space station. It's, it's like a bunch of smaller space stations cobbled together to make a big space station called the Ark, which is really neat looking. It looks, it really does look very cobbled together from other stuff. But back to back to the point, it's like, like they had they had enough uh, supplies to put everyone with their own little radio transmitter, but they didn't think to put a backup radio transmitter on the main capsule thing that they're all gonna be, you know, landing on, you know. And uh, you know, there's like instances where it seemed like the, some of the characters were kind of inconsistent. They're like. Um, Sometimes you sometimes the character Bellamy was helping Clark and Wells, you know, and some and they were uh, you know trying to get contact with the station, and sometimes they weren't, and he was actively trying to like encourage other people to take off their uh, little wristbands to convince the station that everyone was dead and the planet was like lifeless and stuff. And um, another thing um, is the. Like I said in the, like I said earlier, you know they don't encounter any natives, and they're not going to be in, until the sequel, day twenty-one. But in this case, they actually encounter them like fairly quickly, which uh, makes sense because they, you know, like like one of them gets hit by a spear at the end of episode one, and that's you know like, which makes more sense, and it's one of the liberations that you have to. I think it's like works very well because can't exa I don't see how they can have like just how like they would last so long with no natives or anybody ever contact them or even running into evidence of other people there. But yeah, and um, and the only but the only like changes from the book to the show that really bug me deal with the characters. You know, there's. Um, like, I don't want to spoil, like, the what's going on with, um, Clark, but, um, I'll, I'm obviously going to have to spoil some stuff, but her parents are di were both killed, and, um, the revelation of what they did and what, you know, Clark was kind of an accessory to, you know, was really, you know, really, t was really very emotional and... Like, whoa, that's what they did, and like, oh, that's why she's there. But in the TV show, it just feels very, just vanillified, you know? Where I am going to spoil this, it's like, basically, like, her parents, like, only the dad is killed. And the reason why the dad is killed is because, like, they're saying, like, oh, he's trying to tell anyone that, like, Oh, the Ark is dying, and, like, we're running out, and we can't really survive much more. And, um, you know, it's kind of, it looks like it's trying to make them sort of tragic figure that was, like, dealt some sort of, like, injustice and didn't deserve to die. But in the book, they, both their parents died, and they kind of did deserve it, you know. And, um... Or at least that's how I kind of felt, you know, I found out what happened, what they did. But, uh, yeah, anyway, um, and the other thing is dealing with the character Wells, you know. In the book, they, uh, you know, they, uh, she, ha she hates him at first, and then they become a couple at the end. Spoilers. I mean, they, 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 they were a couple in the beginning, and then, like, this thing happened that caused well Clark to hate Wells' guts. And eventually they do like each other by the end, and um, eventually, but in the in the book, spoilers, they um, I think it was around episode five, where they just kill Wells for no reason, like r right after he, you know, makes up with Clark and they decide to be friends, you know, it just uh, they give him the axe. Yeah, I know it's big time spoilers, but. Yeah, you know, it's like, 
I didn't get that. Like they they spent so much time on Wells and uh, giving him the um, you know like like the little rivalry with Bellamy and like wanting order with Bellamy wanting chaos and you know everyone to do what they want. Wells wanted everyone to um, be orderly and uh, you know trying to keep things civil and so forth and you know it was like. Plus, I kind of felt like when it ruined kind of just sort of, uh, like, it didn't really, kind of, the whole thing kind of fell apart with, because then that's when it, characters kind of felt like they became kind of inconsistent. Like, for some reason, Bellamy was upset that Wells was killed and tries to kill the killer. And, uh, yeah, but, anyway, um. Either way, I would give both the show and book a solid 4 out of 5. There, Yeah, there are plenty of flaws with both, but still comfortable recommendations. You know, still, like, you know, entertaining and nice and cool and stuff. And if you can get past some of the, you know, some of the problems or that I had or... If you have them and you can get past them, you'll like it too. You know, which just found it to be a nice thing. And a nice book and a nice, okay TV show. Anyway, um, <clears throat> next time we're going to be taking, you know, going from TV to movies with All You Need Is Kill. Yeah, I know that's not the official title that they're going with, as you can see. But I don't care. The original title was way more awesome. Until then, see you later. Keep it awesome. Have a nice day.